Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel aafinearts.com At any time in this narrated tutorial you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn about my virtual classes or want to see my paintings you can do so in my website at aafinearts.com you can also send me an email to my email address is aafinearts at gmail.com This tutorial is about one in a series of um, tutorials that I have about uh, beach images. Unlike uh, some of the other beach images in my channel, um, which have uh, palm trees, this particular beach scene will not have palm trees, but will have some uh, the beach and the, the water, the nice clouds, will have some grasses, um, saw grass or some other type of beach grasses. And I'm also going to include some uh, pelicans that are flying very low. So let's get to the fun part of this demonstration, which is the painting part. I will start by uh, painting the sky first and uh, I have a fairly straight horizon line. I'm going to paint the sky just above that horizon line. I don't like to, to paint to paint touching the horizon line because when I that sky will be uh, will have a lot of water and when I paint the, the, the water and the ocean then uh, then the, there will be some pigment that will bleed into the sky and I prefer not to do that. So what I'm gonna start with is when in the upper part of the, of the sky area, um, I'm gonna add some water in some areas, not, not all over, because I'm gonna want, want to have some areas and, um, with the, uh, hard edges and others with soft edges. So I'm gonna, when I bring in the brush to the, right to the, almost to the horizon line, I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, not touching that, that line. Um, I'm gonna have, well, I think I better just wet the whole thing. So since I started wetting, sometimes I like to paint on dry paper, sometimes on wet paper. This time it will be all wet paper, so. Like I said, I'm bringing the brush just above the horizon line. Okay, so now I'm going to get some, uh, use my mop brush. I'm going to make a mixture of uh, um, cobalt blue and um, probably some, let's see, probably a burnt sienna, make a gray. with the cobalt blue and burnt sienna. There we are. And with some of that uh, gray, I'm gonna come over here and we can do some of the lower area of some of these clouds. A little bit more water in my brush and a little bit more cobalt blue. And I think I'm gonna change that to ultramarine blue. That would be better. Yeah, some ultramarine will be better. So I have some of the burnt sienna here uh, and ultramarine. And bring that over here like this. Like that. Like that. So now, I'm gonna bring in some uh, manganese blue, quite a bit of manganese blue, and cobalt blue. And hopefully my sky is still kind of wet, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet some areas here. Like that. 
and uh, start bringing some of that those blue color to the sky. And that bring a little bit more of the cobalt blue. Leave some white areas like this. So bring some of the blue, right? Mix it right some into that gray. You know, intensify this a little bit more because this is going to dry much lighter. So I'm just gonna bring some onto these areas too. On the right, over here, I'm going to have some blue. Like that. A little bit of water and soften this area right into that and the sky see it's almost done in fact it is done I'm gonna add a little bit more of the cobalt blue and some areas over here not too much like that and I'm gonna leave it I'll leave it alone there it is it's really nice sky so and leave that alone while that is dry I'm going to take uh, the flat brush again and uh, wet the area where the sand will be and I'm doing the short line at an angle slight angle I didn't want to do a parallel to the horizon line this is, looks a little bit more interesting so I'm going to wet this area where the sand will be, like that. I'm gonna remove the water from the tape. I don't want to, that to bleed into my painting, like that. And uh, while that is drying, I'm gonna get some, uh, a little bit of the burnt sienna, not too much and um, put a little bit of the burnt sienna over here it's going to be very soft this is where the sand is a little bit wet uh, i'm going to also bring a little bit of ultramarine into that have, have similar colors that i had in the sky make that a little bit uh, kind of grayish as opposed to just the brown like that there we are There. I'm going to change brushes to my flat, smaller flat brush and I'm going to also bring some, a little bit of the burnt sienna and ultramarine, make it a nice gray again and bring some of that over here where this dune will be. Same over here, like that. A little bit more of the burnt sienna. There we are, like that. Maybe a little bit of that color over here, kind of warm. Bring it to that. I'm going to tone down some of that with, uh, I'm going to make a, a combination of brown matter and the ultramarine a little different uh, tone to it bring some of that over here a little different type of gray there we are like that a little bit more of that Maybe in this area, a little bit more there. And uh, so a little bit of that in this area too. There we are. And uh, over here where the sand will be wet, I'm gonna add some of that too. There. Okay, 
So we let that dry. And uh, while that's drying, I'm gonna test the sky. The sky is still kind of damp, so I'm gonna wait. Oops, there was a little bit of a water in my brush there, so they created a blossom. I'll take care of that later. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that now. We'll create a cloud there. Um, there, fixed. All right. So while that's drying, now I'm going to uh, get me some raw sienna, a fairly strong raw sienna, just a little bit of aureole in yellow, and um, uh, some cerulean blue. We'll do this with a flat brush, a little bit more of the raw sienna. And uh, on the dry, on the damp paper here, I'm gonna start adding some of the color for the base color for those grasses that are gonna be over here. Like that. This is all on the damp paper right now. Uh, a little bit more of the raw sienna. And uh, the cerulean blue mixed in the palette. Uh, I'm going to bring some of that over here, like this, on the, that damp paper, like that. There we are. Add some over here, like this, creating a little path. A little bit more over here. And then there we are. Okay, good. So now I'm not going going to the water. My brush, this areas of the paper is still damp. My brush is damp too. So what I'm going to do here is get more raw sienna just with that damp brush. And this time I'm going to change to ultramarine blue and get a, start getting some of the green color. Uh, so then I'm going to take the brush, my flat brush, and put that against my finger and separate the bristles like this. And with that I will start doing some of the grasses over here like this. holding the brush way back in the handle. Not this way, but way back in the handle, you have more control. Again, separating the bristles like that, have a lot more control over the, uh, the way the, the, the handle, the brush will do those uh, grasses. I'm gonna add a little bit more of those colors the raw sienna and the ultramarine. And again, separating the bristles like this. We go over here and do a little bit more of those grasses. Put them over here. Barely touching the sand there. There, there we are. Some over here. As the paper begins to dry, I'm gonna start increasing the value of those colors. I'm also going to bring some under sea green into that with the raw sienna and start getting a much darker tone value for those colors. Now the paper is almost dried now, so this is this all of everything here will be much sharper like that. Uh, this is good. 
this is really nice the way this that this is done. Bring more of the undersea green and the ultramarine. Start increasing the values now. Uh, do the same thing with the bristles like that. There. There we are. More darker, darker colors now. And some of this grasses are going to more see my paper is dry now. Now this is really nice. With that. There's some taller grasses too, going over here this way. And that. I'm also going to increase the value of those colors. I'll do the same thing with the bristles. There we are. Now that we have a much darker effect with the darker values on the on the grasses. Um, do, do some taller grasses over here. I'm gonna after I finish the water, I'm gonna do more of those areas. But here, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Same thing over here. Few grasses there like that. There. Okay. So now I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna pick up a, a, a smaller flat brush. And um, now my sky is dry, so I'll go ahead and make a, a mixture of the manganese blue, a little bit of a cobalt teal, very little water in my brush. And with that, I'm gonna start coming over here and do the, the horizon. Bring that brush right, the edge of the brush right, very carefully, right by the horizon line. And this is the reason why I did not want to wet the paper when I was doing the sky down to the horizon line, because it would have bled. This would have bled all the way into the sky. So there, there we are. So do that. Bring some more over here and start leaving some white areas for the crest of some of the waves. Make and make those really narrow though because the waves are start breaking uh, but closer to the shore then those crests will be much wider like that and then before that dries i'm going to bring some ultramarine blue mixed into that color that i had and do the horizon it's always a little darker like that. There we are. So now, very little water to my, add into my brush. Come back with the cobalt teal and start blending some of those colors and bring more of that uh, cobalt teal, leaving some of the white crests. Um, I'm going to blend these colors a little bit more. There we are. Make some of those crests for the waves that begin to break. And as we come closer to the shore, I'm going to leave a little bit more white like that. And uh, really closer to the shore, 
I'm gonna start increasing the, the water in my brush and be able to leave some of those white areas for the crests of the waves. And I'm gonna, here I'm gonna start undulating some of these areas to show where the waves are gonna start breaking. Like this, and this, this area will be one undulating section. Another one over here, like that. Come over here, like that. And continue there. Also going to bring a little bit of uh, um, raw sienna closer to the shore. There's always a little, the water is a little bit on the green side, so. And this is, this, this is right on the Gulf Coast. The coloration of the water on the Gulf Coast is different than the Atlantic. So there we are. A little bit, a little bit more of the manganese blue. And come over here and do this like this. There's the waves are beginning to break there, like that. Connect those over here and come down right to the sand. There, like that. Okay. Also going to start darkening a little bit some of those waves. And just start adding the shadow of the wave as it begins to fold and similar to some of those areas that should be a little bit darker like that same thing over here a little, a little darker then come down over here like that and we'll do a little bit of that over here too there. and the water is pretty much done so now I'll get some moisture out of my brush and, and connect the, this area with the horizon. Kind of soften it from there. So the water is done. Here's that area where the beach, the sand is kind of wet. Everything else is fine. Very nice color sky. So now uh, now that uh, I've had the have the water done, I'm going to get uh, pick up a smaller uh, round brush and then maybe my rigged brush will be better and uh, pick up some of the some of the raw sienna again quite a bit mix it with the ultramarine and the and the sea green get some more raw sienna there. All right, so now I'll get some of that and do some of these tall grasses like this coming over here like that. Um, there will be a little bit of over here too. Like that. And these are the sea oats. And the sea oats have a um, smaller brush, get more of the raw sienna mixed with those colors. And here are the sea oats. There. there we are, put some over here, there, okay, 
Now the beach is done. So what I'm gonna do now is create a little bit of a disturbed disruption on the sand, you know, footsteps or things like that. So I'm gonna re-wet this area a little bit, not too much. And uh, with a smaller brush, I'm gonna bring a little bit of the cobalt blue and uh, brown matter, create a gray similar to the grays that I have here. And on that wet sand, I'm gonna do a little bit of the footsteps or disruptions on the sun, like that. When people walk, always leave footprints and things like that. There we are. Not too many. In fact, uh, I think probably I'm gonna do, collect some of this. Like that. There we are, that's all. Also, I'm gonna take this larger brush and pick up some of the cobalt blue. And uh, that um, brown matter. And add a little bit more of that grayish tone in some, some, some areas over here. A little bit more of those colors. There, which, there we are. And that's about it. So the beach is done. The sky should be dry by now. So let me just taste it. Yeah, that's, that's, the water is dry too. So now become the pelicans. For that, I'm gonna, I was, I, mean, I was painting standing up. So now I'm gonna sit down because I need to have a little bit more control when I do the pelicans. And I don't want any water in the sky. And I can see there's a little, a little, a little bit of a drop there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a smaller brush, a smaller round brush, and I'm gonna make a mixture of uh, sepia and uh, ultramarine blue. Make a gray. Uh, here come those pelicans. This is dry, yep, it's dry. So, do the little head and then the, they have the long, long wingspan. There we are, that's one. Maybe, maybe a little bit of a burnt sienna mix there. A little bit of warmer tone to it. Enlarge this image so I can see. Okay, here we are. There's another one over here, a little larger. There we are. And then we got another one over here, a little higher. come down closer then they start you know they they, they, they fly in groups so and so we have to do them that way too so not to separate them too much there and then we come down some over here we'll have one over here with the wing is a little in a different position There, and then we get a little bit more brown, and we'll have some over here, one over here, like that, a little bit more blue there, and now we start dropping to the water. Closer to the water. There. 
add more water in my brush, slightly more. Starts skimming the water. There. Okay, that's all we need. Not not many. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm starting. I'm going to increase the value of some of these grasses. Here and I think I'm gonna do that with, uh, with my smaller brush. So again, separating the bristles, do a little darker values for some of those grasses. over here like this same thing over here a little taller a few over here there that's all okay um, so the painting is pretty much done so I'm going to remove this tape and I'm gonna put this paper on the darker surface so you'll be able to appreciate this painting a little bit more. Get rid of that tape, sticks to my hand. <laughs> Remove this very carefully, like that, because I don't want to tear the watercolor paper. Um, bring it, come over here and remove it like that. This has to be done very carefully. Uh, so please excuse my hand. Uh, but there's no way to do this otherwise. So I'm going to do the remove the tape over here. Uh, here comes the darker color. I'm going to use black. And uh, I'm going to put it here and minimize it so you can see there. And there's the beach with some grasses, some sea oats, you know, nice, really nice sky with some warm colors for some of the clouds, some little bit of cool colors here. Uh, very, very nice color coloration for the Gulf of Mexico and uh, the pelicans coming down and beginning to skim the water looking for fish. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy my painting and please visit my website at aafinearts.com where you will see information about my virtual classes and a selection of my paintings and prints. You can also uh, contact me at my uh, email address at aafinearts at gmail.com. Until next time.